Uh, Sanders, what kind of scouting report could you give us on the true freshman? True well, freshman? you know, he's a young guy that is a dynamic player. He's got excellent ball skills. I think you'll see his uh, athleticism and his quickness and his ability to get separation off the dribble. And, and he shoots the three really well, as you saw against Illinois. Uh, and the play, of course, he made in overtime uh, to tie the game was just ridiculous. So I think you can see that um, his uh, competitiveness come out too. I mean, he, those guys are dying for a win. Is he better than he was a month ago? Uh, you know, uh, I think everybody grows and develops and gets better as the year goes on. So uh, I would expect him to be better. And, and certainly as, uh, you know, I think the second time around, you know what to expect as you go through the league a little more too. Yeah. So you quit thinking so much and just start doing. And I, I believe that he's, that he's uh, more comfortable and just playing more aggressively. Put yourself in Eddie Jordan's shoes. Your team's coming off I've been that. there. <laughs> Colorado State. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're coming off that, you know, long game, extended game that could wear on you. Is that, do you look at that as a head coach? Uh, yeah, well, I'm sure he managed that yesterday, but these kids are young and vibrant. Uh, I don't believe that uh, we're going to see a whole bunch of, um, I don't believe we'll see any, Residual, quote unquote, yeah, residual from that hangover, whatever you want to call it. I think they'll bounce back and, and be fine. Um, what you do in those, you know, I, I went 0 16 in the Mountain West my first year, and Steve Fisher called me to congratulate me on breaking his record because he was at San Diego State uh, when they went 0 14. And I said, Yeah, but we're still tied, tied, we're still tied in losing percentage, we're still at zero. <laughs> you know, I mean, winning percentage, whatever you can't call it that, can you? But, um, and so I've been in those positions, and all you worry about is getting your players better, you know, keeping their morale up, finding a way to win each game. And we were able to win in the conference tournament. Uh, and so that was really great for our guys to at least have something at the end of the year to build on. And, and uh, the next year we won four league games, and then all of a sudden we were pretty solid in the league, but it took a while. How tough is it to beat a team twice, even though you, you were able to kind of control I, the game? Obviously, getting the guys' attention because of the, I think, the way the game went. You know, it was 20 at halftime or whatever and got to, you know, a larger sum. And the Rutgers, you know, we're not that good and Rutgers is, is not that bad. So uh, uh, I don't think that's a relevant, um, you know, we, we kind of ignore that that game happened with them. And all we have to worry about is finding a way to win at home. You know, this we've, we've had some really difficult games, lost four of them in the league at home. And that's not good enough. We need to be a better home team, and, and we've got to figure that out now. Is um, we talked about their freshmen? How do you feel like your freshmen are hanging in there amidst this Big Ten, you know, grind? I think they're doing all right. I think uh, you see some of them. You know, uh, uh, Jack McBay probably hasn't had his best games recently. His rebound, you know, and you see it in little things like his rebounding's falling off. Um, Making shots, not making shots, I don't necessarily always judge that. I, I'd rather look at the decision you make on whether it's a good shot or not. But mm. For instance, you know how Jack looked off a shot the other night. We ran an action out of a timeout. Yeah. It actually was going to get him yeah. a three in the second half. He's, and he's really, I don't want to say wide open because that makes it sound, but he's open. He's open enough to make the shot, shoot the shot, and he's made those before. And he just looked it off and just dribbled out. And We end up, you know, here everybody runs this action for Jack to shoot, and he's out of a timeout, and he won't even do it. That tells me that you know I need to get to Jack, and we need to restore some of that uh, um, confidence and, and, and those things. So that's just an example yeah. uh, on one guy. Jacobson re responded really well, I thought, to the Purdue game. Is that? The yeah, one? I think that he responded to a film, uh, which didn't look pretty, and uh, that tells you Mike's got more competitiveness than maybe uh, his pretty face shows. Go, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say with Glenn, uh, you know, he didn't play the last four minutes or so of that. Uh, Maryland game and you said that was because of defensive breakdowns and turnovers was that well, yeah I think I, I wasn't turnovers as much as um, cat what I said was catastrophic errors ah, okay. um, I believe and that's what I meant to say in my mind anyway I could have said anything so it was right <laughs> after the game um, but uh, and, and you know he just hopped a couple wrong ways like instead of forcing Mel into a ball screen um, you know, and they twist it late. He kind of made some mistakes, and Mello just got right down the line, right? 
And that was some, those were the errors I was talking about. It's, more de it's all defensive errors. And a couple shot selection deals too. You know, he wasn't strong at the rim. I think he was, uh, their length bothered him. Like I think Siobhan had told me um, in film, like these guys are way longer than Purdue. You know, I think that was their feeling. And, you know, so anytime you'd say that when you have 13 